What's up, Guardians? Haterade here, and today we're going to take a look at replacing one of the best exotics in the game right now for Void Titans with the use of mods to shake things up a bit. There's been a lot of talk about Void builds this season centering around the exotic Heart of Inmost Light, but what would you say if I told you there was a way to replicate that and pair it with any exotic? Sounds too good to be true, right? We'll stick around and I'll show you just how to do it. But first, if you find this video to be helpful, then a like is greatly appreciated as it helps me with the YouTube algorithm as well as subscribing to the channel for future Destiny 2 content. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. To give you some background, the Titan Exotic Chest Armor, Heart of Inmost Light, has seen a massive spike in usage thanks to the release of Void 3.0. Synergy between the new Void aspects and fragments with the exotic's intrinsic perk, Overflowing Light, has seen it take commanding lead in usage as far as exotic armor goes. It's kind of like putting the pumpers up when you go bowling. You don't even have to think about what you're doing, and you're going to be spamming abilities all day long. Let's look at how we can replicate that with the use of certain mods and pair that with any exotic armor you want. To start, let's take a look at the revamped Sentinel subclass and the aspects and fragments that are going to make this build possible. We'll first look at the melee ability. We'll be focusing on the insanely powerful Shield Bash that does two things. As the melee states in-game, after sprinting for a short time, use this melee to unleash a devastating Shield Bash that suppresses your target. Final blows of this melee grant you an overshield. Sounds pretty nuts, right? Just you wait. For your grenade choice, feel free to use whatever you prefer, though I tend to lean towards the Vortex Grenade for its crowd control ability, or the Suppressor Grenade, which we'll talk more about later. Moving on to the aspects, and here's where things start to change from some previous Void builds you may have seen. Let's start with Offensive Bulwark. Now, I know everyone is all up in arms about Bastion and the on-demand overshield you can get from popping your barricade, but stick with me here. Offensive Bulwark states that while you have an overshield or are inside of Ward of Dawn, your grenade charges significantly faster, you have increased melee range and damage, and melee final blows extend the duration of your overshield. You also gain an additional shield throw while in Sentinel Shield. Pay attention to that part of the aspect about extending your overshield though, as that's what's going to come into play later. Next, we have the aspect Controlled Demolition, which states that hitting a target with a Void ability or Volatile Explosion makes them volatile. Further damage to the target causes them to explode, grants you and nearby allies health when Volatile targets explode near you. Essentially, this aspect helps with ad clear and has the potential to heal you and your fire team. Each of these aspects give you two fragment slots respectively for a total of four. And here's where things start to stack up. First off, we have Echo of Persistence, allowing for our overshield to stay up for a longer period of time. Next up, Echo of Leeching allows for health regeneration to kick in when defeating an enemy that you shield bash. It means you get an overshield and instant healing after bashing an enemy to death. The last two fragments work together to keep your abilities up, allowing you to spam everything. Echo of Exchange states that melee final blows grant grenade energy, and Echo of Provision states that damaging targets with grenades grants melee energy. You can see now how you'll be alternating usage of your abilities to reduce the cooldown of the other. But wait, there's more. Elemental Well Mods are going to crank this build up to 11. Now there's a lot going on here as we'll want to focus on both the Elemental Well Mods and individual Armor Mods that influence cooldown times. Don't worry about remembering what goes where, as towards the end of the video, I'll have a cheat sheet showcasing all the mod placements. To start, you'll want to focus on three different Elemental Well Mods. They are Elemental Ordnance, Melee Wellmaker, and Bountiful Wells. With Elemental Ordnance and Melee Wellmaker, you'll be creating Elemental Wells whenever defeating enemies with their corresponding ability. What Bountiful Wells lets you do is essentially stack multiple copies of these mods to create more wells with each ability kill. Now, you've got five mod slots for Elemental Wells, so technically you could run two of each, and then Bountiful Wells to allow these abilities to feed into each other. However, the setup I found to work well was running two Melee Wellmakers, one Elemental Ordnance, and Bountiful Wells, leaving that last spot up for something like Well of Tenacity for a damage resist after picking up those Void Elemental Wells, which will be all the time, or Reaping Wellmaker, that way I can indirectly make another Elemental Well after popping my Barricade, thus bringing the full ability rotation into play, much like when using Heart of Inmost Light. If you're wanting to go even further into reducing your ability cooldown, you can put something like Harmonic Siphon on your helmet to create orbs of power when getting rapid final blows with an elemental weapon that matches your subclass type. So in this case, something void. You can then scoop these orbs up and thanks to the leg mod Absolution, you'll get a reduction in your cooldown for all abilities for each orb you pick up. What's that? You want even less of a cooldown for your abilities? Then look to your gauntlets. Gauntlets with a stasis affinity have the ability to slot the mods Grenade Kickstart and Melee Kickstart, which refund a portion of your ability energy whenever that ability is used. Think we're done reducing cooldowns yet? Nope. Look on your class item and you'll find mods like Distribution and Bomber that further reduce ability cooldowns when using your class ability. The last piece of the puzzle for the mods is the seasonal mod Energy Vampirism. With this mod, you gain energy for your least charged ability when you suppress a target aka whenever you hit something with your shield bash melee or suppression grenade Whew, okay you got all that i realized that this type of a build requires a lot of work to set up but now you essentially have a heart of inmost light build without the exotic speaking of exotics let's look at some top tier exotic armor pieces to pair with this build 
For starters, I'm going to hit you with a massive curveball. All right, ready? Mark 44 stand asides. I don't think I've ever seen this exotic find a home in any build, and I would wager to say it's one of the most underwhelming and least used exotics. But with this build, it's time to shine has come. Their exotic perk, seriously watch out, grants an overshield when sprinting at full health that starts almost immediately after sprinting. The cool thing about this is that as long as you're sprinting, the shield will continue to regenerate. But the main focus of this exotic is the second part of the perk. Hits with your shield bash will recharge a portion of your melee energy. That's hits, not kills. So all you need to do is connect with your melee and boom, free ability energy. While this exotic gives you another boost to ability cooldowns, there's one other that I've found to work well with this build, and that's Peregrine Greaves. With these exotic boots and their intrinsic perk, Peregrine Strike, your shoulder charge ability, aka Shield Bash, will deal bonus damage when activated in the air. The ability to do up to 363% increased melee damage on a target is massive and can help you take down some tankier enemies and even champions with ease. These are the two that I found to be incredibly fun to use and effective with this build, but you have plenty of other options of exotics to use. Helm of Saint 14, Precious Scars, even things like Armamentarium or Crest of Alpha Loopy. The opportunities are endless, and now that you've got the mod set up to replicate Heart of Inmost Light, you can take that build to the next level by adding in the benefits of another piece of exotic armor. Honestly, I love this build and being able to tie in the benefits of Heart of Inmost Light with any exotic is kind of mind boggling. The downside I see to running something like this is mod buy-in required to set it up. And using so many elemental well mods that create wells, you miss out on anything that buffs your damage or even the ability to use things like Charge with Light or Warmind Cell mods. I'll be sure to see how enjoyable this build will be with the release of Grandmaster Nightfalls and the master version of Vow of the Disciple here soon to really test its effectiveness in endgame group activities. With that, we're at the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed this build breakdown and learned something from it. As always, I'll have the link to the dim load out in the description if you want to take a look at everything and set the build up for yourself. If you enjoyed this video or found it at all helpful, then a like is greatly appreciated. Subscribe for more Destiny 2 content, and feel free to check out this build and many more live over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash I stream Destiny 2 three to four days a week, and would love to have you swing by and check out the channel. That's it. I'm done. I'm out. I'll see you all in the next one.